this is Rebecca from Rebecca Sewing Corner, and uh, I'm back today to talk about binders again. Today I'm going to be talking about how to turn this double fold binder, which is a 36 millimeter to 10 millimeter double fold, uh, into a single fold, which means that the underneath edge remains a raw edge while you have a folded edge on the right side of your fabric, on the right side of your project. Now explain the difference between a single and a double and how to identify the difference between a single and a double fold binder in my video going in depth into binders. And at that time I mentioned that a single fold binder will not have this lower section, this lower folding section or, or curved section. So when you're looking at a binder and you see that it has an upper and a lower curved section, you know it's a double fold. And if this is missing, it's a single fold. Now that's already giving you some hints about how do we turn this double fold into a single fold. And um, it is very um, lovingly called the paper hack. And actually all we really need to do is to block off this fold section of the binder to prevent the fabric from go flowing into that while it's going through the, the binder. And also make sure that the strip that we have for the binder uh, then has an adjusted width. Okay, so let me show you actually how easy that is. Um, as I've indicated, we lovingly call it the paper hack. Um, it really is that. We're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to block off this little shoot down there. Now keep in mind that this is a 36 to 10 millimeter binder and if you have a different size binder that means that you might need to make some adjustments either in the width of the paper or the width of the, um, the strip that you're putting in so it won't match 100% with mine. Um, but you know, I'm going to be giving you enough pointers to get the good idea about it. Now I have my, uh, my lovely piece of paper and this is actually the paper that I always use, right? So I have this stored in my uh, beloved drawer over here on my right hand side where I keep all of my um, my cool tools that I use often. And I really, I do keep a hold of this piece of paper because it just makes my life easier. Now this piece of paper is folded. It's just off a regular notepad. It's a regular piece of paper, simple as that. And um, I folded uh, I folded it in, in half once, right? So in half once. And then I folded that into thirds. And the final width of this piece of paper, let me get my little ruler over here so that you can see that, right, is approximately seven millimeters. Okay, now if you think about it, okay, seven millimeters, I have a 36 to 10, so my folded edges or the, the pieces of my fold are gonna be somewhere between, yeah, eight, nine, 10 millimeters wide. So a seven millimeter width seems pretty reasonable in order to block off that shoot. So look for, you know, look for a size that sort of corresponds to your binder and, and the width that, you know, that, that you possibly need. Now, once you've had it folded up in a couple of layers so that it just has a, has a bit of stability, um, this is then where it, uh, let's say, gets extremely technical. So hold on to your seats here. You just need to take your binder, right, and push very gently this piece of paper right up into your fold, into that uh, fold trough or chute that you have there. And you're going to want to push it so that it's all the way up in the front and you want to kind of have a little bit hanging down so that you sort of have a smooth edge that, you know, things don't get caught up on here and, and your fabric can still flow smoothly. And let me show you this up top and hopefully you'll be able to see it. You really want this piece of paper to go all the way up to the front and to be blocking off the entire way. Now if I pull it back and forth, you can see it moving up in the front section of the binder. Um, and that's really what you want to have. You just want to have it up in there safely. and You've got a little tag so you can pull it out at any time. So guess what? That was it. We just turned the double fold into a single fold binder. Now, the next piece is to make sure that we have a strip of fabric that has the right width. Now, if you have a different size binder, one of the things you can do is to take a double fold binding job that you've done and 
cut it so that you have a cross section and so have a look at how much fabric is in that that fold and um, have that as already as a starting point um, as an estimate about how wide to cut to remove from your overall width and how wide to cut your fabric. Now for mine, um, actually it ended up being simple math. So my input is supposed to be 36. My starting point was I divided by four and subtracted that and came up with, believe it or not, 27 millimeters. And I have found that if I cut a 27 millimeter strip and feed it through, I get really great results for this binder. So I'm going to go over to my cutting table and I'm going to cut a strip of binding material and come back and uh, weave that in and show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back from the cutting table and uh, I have a width, uh, uh, a width, a uh, length of very boring fabric with me today, um, but I promise you I have contrasting uh, threads in my machine, so that'll make um, it really great to have a look at it. Now I've wrapped my binding around a um, pretty much empty spool of thread so that it doesn't get away from me. I'm going to pull out uh, enough to go from right to left on the binder, put a pin back into it so that it doesn't run away on me and doesn't come unwound, and I'm just going to thread it in. Now I've gone um, through fitting in uh, strips of fabric in my previous or in my in-depth video. So if you, I'm not going to cover that in depth, I'm just going to feed it in really quick. Um, as I mentioned in my in my in-depth video, I like to have this piece here in the front when I come out of the rake so that I have more control over the tensions if I want to uh, control the tensions. I'm just going to feed that in by hand. You can see it. Oh, it's peeking out there. Get that in. Grab a trusted pair of tweezers to help pull through. And uh, I've already got my strip all the way up there in the front. Now let's have a look at this from the front. See? It's not running away on me. Okay, and th this is a view I really like and I think it's important to have a look at and to make sure you understand. Okay, so when we look at this, we're still seeing the upper fold and um, and that's you know making sure that we'll we'll know that when we when we get this on our project that we're going to have a covered edge or a folded edge on the right side. Then down here we have what's going to end up being the outer right hand fold. And if you look down here, if you can see it, there's no more folds down there. Just basically ends. And I'm going to put this down. I'm going to pull the fabric out a little bit more, and you should be able to see it a little bit better. Got it peeking out right there. So we just got we just have a raw edge down there. Okay, now I'm going to um, continue pulling the strip out through to the back, and uh, and then we can we can again have a look at the alignment of all of this. Okay, so I'm gonna just pinch that down. Now obviously it's not going to look you know, extremely professional, but I still think it's important when you're you know practicing and setting this up for the first time, that you really just have a look and see, you know, is your strip width potentially the right width, are the settings correct, and all of that. So if we look at the back side, you see that here is my raw edge, okay, and it's staggered comfortably to the folded edge, which means that the alignment is probably pretty good, and when I get this on my machine um, and lined up to my needles and my presser foot, uh, I'm gonna have pretty, high chance of, of catching um, this, this edge uh, in between my needles. Okay, and it's kind of a bit undone, but looking at it from cross section, I think it's good to have a look at it. You can also see the cross section, okay? So you've got, this is gonna be your right side, you've got the fold and then the raw edge on the wrong side. So that's what it looks like. The bumpers, okay, you notice I didn't talk about the bumpers like I did in my in-depth video. I haven't changed anything. There's no, should be no need to change the positioning of your bumpers from the double to the single fold option because you, you want to have your folds and your edges still all in the same place. Okay, so the bumpers have not changed. So what have I done? I folded up a piece of paper to block off this, this uh, chute for the uh, lower fold. I've cut my fabric strip narrower and in this case, it's at 27 millimeters, and that works really well with this specific binder. So we're basically ready to go. We're ready to sew. So I'm going to um, attach this to my machine, 
and um, we'll give it a whirl and see what it looks like. Okay, I've got my binder now attached to my machine. Now in my in-depth video, one of the things I mentioned is that I mark the sweet spot, which is um, where my binder should be uh, at its most optimum spot on my machine with a um, magic marker on a piece of tape. And I mark the lower right hand corner so that I have it really easy every time I want to line up and, and, and get going with the binder. So that made that attachment really quick. Uh, I recommend you find a way to, uh, to you know, mark your sweet spot and, and find it if you're planning on, on using your binder, even just a little bit because um, it just makes it so much easier to get started. Now I have my strip over here on my uh, little spool holder that my dear husband made for me um, so I don't have to play octopus and that'll just unwind as it is. And uh, now we just need to um, get this pulled over into the machine. Now I prefer um, to sort of pre-fold uh, my, my binding so that it kind of you know has the folds that I think it should have. Um, before I pull it back underneath and back behind the foot, making sure that I have my tweezers well past the end of the foot um, so that first of all I can get them out and secondly my binding strip is not going to get caught in the differential um, and, um, and, and jam up uh, while I'm trying to get sewing. So be an octopus here and get the presser foot down. Um, we're pretty much ready to go. Now um, I'm going to take a first uh, first couple of stitches, holding on the threads, making sure that my um, my uh, threads are secured and uh, hopefully not um, so loose as soon as I get to putting in uh, my fabric. So I'm going to put you on mute, and uh, no, I'm going to put the microphone on mute, and I'm going to take a few stitches. So I've got that started up and uh, now I'm going to feed the fabric in. So actually today I have a, a, a larger piece of fabric and um, it's kind of hard to see because I want you to have a close up of the machine, uh, but I have sort of artificially cut a, um, a curve, uh, kind of like a, a lower neckline curve uh, into it so that I'm demonstrating this on something a little more realistic than just a straight piece of fabric. So just feed that in, as usual, as always, in gently, making sure it's just you know, lined up, not pushing, not pulling, etc. Now, while I'm sewing, as I mentioned in my in-depth video, we're just going to be guiding the fabric. No pushing, no pulling, no shoving, and whatever. Um, just guiding it and making sure it lines up. Now, there was the question about the, the neckline curves, and that we're just going to slowly, you know, as we're going, we're just going to sort of guide it straight uh, into the binding. Okay, so I'm about to get started. I'm going to put you again on mute so that you don't have to listen to the noise of my machine, um, but you can still watch me show. So. Okay, so we've reached the end of that, and uh, I'm going to release the project from my machine. As always, as with all uh, removal out of the machine, it's pull your threads forward, swipe them out from underneath, grab your scissors, snip, and pull to the back. Now I've still got quite a bit of binding on my strip, so I'm actually just going to um, cut the strip here and then cut the looper so I can pull it out. Now let's have a look at what we produced. Let's see if it did what we said it should. Okay, 
so you see here uh, on the let's say on the right side of, of the fabric I chose contrasting threads you can see that I, I did a curve now you see that it's uh, a little bit um, wavy so uh, actually if I look back at my uh, binding attachment I see that I kept my rake very flat I didn't pull it forward so I didn't have a lot of tension um, on my strip so this would be an indication that I maybe didn't have enough this will probably steam out right so so you know this this isn't isn't really this this bit of wave right here isn't that much of a concern so what you see uh, is a um, relatively consistent uh, row of stitches to the folded edge on, on the right hand side. You see here that we've got that uh, little flap that we want to have, that nice fold. Um, and let's look at the back side. See how it came out. Okay, so that looks really good. Not much else to say on that one. Um, no, let's look at it in detail. Okay, so here uh, I, I have contrasting threads, so you can see the um, the needle threads uh, peeking out a little bit, which is just fine, and the yellow threads. And what you do, what you don't really see because it's covered <clears throat> by the the looper thread, is is the raw edge, which means from an alignment perspective, we did a great job. Um, and that's exactly what you want. We've got we've got stretch. Now, what I'm going to do is look at the um, the finished end of it with you. I'm going to cut it off uh, so that we have a, uh, a look at the cross section. Okay, because that's that's sort of also important to have a look at the cross section of, of what we did. Um, take my tweezers so we can maybe hopefully pick it out a bit. So down here we've got our um, binding strip. You see that? We've got the upper folded section and the raw edges on the inside. Then we've got the layer of fabric, which is you know nicely up here on the uh, outer fold. And then you can see here, if we look at it, um, this is then the lower, the wrong side of your project and the wrong side of the fabric, and we just have the, the single layer. So with that, my sewing friends, we have successfully turned our double fold binder into a single fold and attached a strip of binding. To, uh, to our project. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. And um, if you liked it, uh, give me some feedback. If you didn't like it, give me some feedback as well. I'm always appreciative of uh, constructive uh, feedback. And I look forward to seeing you again in Rebecca's Sewing Corner.